Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. And this morning I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Oxford University Press, OUP. It's on product liability. It's an important book, very much a book for the 21st century. It's now in its third edition and it's proved to be very popular. It's been written by two people, Duncan Fairgreave and Richard Goldberg. The title we've given for our uh, book review is the following. Product Liability. What are your rights when things go wrong? A broad international approach to a vital area of law, which is now in a new third edition. And as I say, it's not just a question of English law here and the basis of the House of Lords decision in Donoghue and Stevenson in the 30s, which of course was... Um, covering both Scotland as well as England in terms of the jurisdiction. The point is it's international in its flavour because today when we buy things they're not necessarily manufactured just in England and Wales, they're manufactured all over the place. Let's look at the book, it's a heavy one, very hard, hard very much the, the house style of OUP, there's the, the spine, there's nothing on the back. Now when we open it, the back of the book um, it's by paragraph numbering the index. You can see there's a substantial index at the back. It, the, the book runs to just under a thousand pages. It's, as I said, it's a heavy book and it's only just come out. I'm recording this in the spring of 2020. The book just arrived. It was a little bit delayed in, uh, in publishing, probably partly because of the coronavirus problems. There's the, back, the, the index itself. Then you've got the actual body copy. In fact, you've got an appendix here. You can see the appendix is actually on uh, a council directive. And appendix one, that's for an EC directive. And then there's an extract of the Consumer Protection Act for appendix one, 1987, that act, of course. Then you've got the basic, you can see from the back of the book, the paragraph numbering at the side and the footnotes at the bottom. So you can see there's a lot of detail here, a huge amount of information. We go to the front of the book. There's the front. You can see um, Fairgreave and uh, Goldberg are mentioned. Fairgreave is Senior Fellow in Comparative Law, the British Institute of International Comparative Law, and he's a Professor of Comparative Law at uh, the University Paris. Um, and Richard Goldberg is Professor of Law at Durham University, and he's a solicitor. Now we get, there's a detail about OUP, and then there's a preface which actually sets up what the changes are. The preface is worth reading because after you get through the, the beginning bit of it, you then get to the various parts of the book which have been amended since the previous edition, which was a while ago. And in fact, Paris and Durham is the address given August 2019 for the, um, the uh, contents of the front. That's the preface. Then you've got the contents section itself. You can see the various parts. Um, and then there's a detailed content section after that, running all the way through. And you should be able to find what you're looking for quite quickly. Then you have the table of cases, a very large number of cases, of course. And then and I also have cases from other jurisdictions, which is interesting because I did say this is about international as well as national uh, matters. So you've got a very wide range of different countries, ending up with the United States at the bottom. Quite a large number. Then after that, you get to the statutes and regulations and rules. And then after that, we've got some uh, treaties and conventions. Again, running a long way through. And then a very useful list of abbreviations because there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, useful information. Obviously, it mentions standard works like Anson's Law of Contract. Benjamin's sale of goods, uh, and so forth. Um, Clark and Linsel on talks, and so on. Then you get to the work itself. You see what we've got. We've got a little mini index at the front for the chapter. And then you start off with the introduction. You've got the paragraph numbering and all the footnoting. And that's the way it has, just plugging it in the middle. That's the way it runs all the way through. So say a thousand pages of very substantial advice, which will be relevant to not just to practitioners, I think, but to lay people as well, because a very large number of people today, of course, are litigants in person. So what do we say about it? We say this. <clears throat> Products, be they shoes or ships or sealing wax, are those items or substances which are produced normally by human hand 
or human agency. They manifest themselves in all shapes, sizes, forms, functions and compositions. Obviously, the presence of products is global. Their ubiquity is mind-blowingly obvious and the sheer variety of products available is well-nigh infinite as over the years new products and attendant services emerge almost daily, usually generated by perceived consumer need. <clears throat> and of course that is one of the reasons why the book is so relevant now, because the law has changed. And it's changed for a lot of reasons, because we've got much more legislation, many more cases, statutory instruments, um, and the old common law systems have really gone from the past because there's much more codification coming into the into what we have, hence the statute at the back and, of course, the directive from the European Union. But what happens if things go wrong with a product? What resource or recourse, is rather, is, is available to the consumer? The answers, most of them, and almost an infinite variety of them, emanate from the law relating to product liability, hence the title of the work. <clears throat> Fortunately for lawyers everywhere, especially when so many court proceedings are going um, virtual, in other words, they're becoming remote at the moment, the um, long-established um, legal text on product uh, liability, long regarded as definitive, is now out in a new third edition published by OUP, and written by two leading authorities in the field, Duncan Fairgreave and Richard um, Goldberg. Now, completely updated is this work from a previous edition, which came out in 2004, so there's a gap of 16 years. This new edition supplies that which has become rather desperately needed in these desperate times. That's a clear statement of the law of product liability in all its var variety and complexity. And I think anybody who's done the bar exams will know that this is probably a book you might find useful for one of your training exercises above everything else. But I won't give too much away in case they've changed the, the exercises. Now, long overdue then, this uh, edition certainly reflects the changes in the ways that most people now view products and how said products are marketed over the internet. Of course, what has not changed too much since the Snell in the Ginger Beer case of Donahue and Stevenson is the vulnerability of the average consumer to produce defects, uh, to product defects rather, some of which can do threaten life and limb. The authors offer a very short list of these to include things like breast implants, pacemakers and hip prosthesis, as well as 40 mountain bikes, motorcycles, car tyres and even a coffee cup. Vaccines too are listed, how truly relevant today. Featuring prominently in the text, therefore, is a detailed discussion of, <coughs> for example, and that's obviously the leading statute, the Consumer Protection Act 1987, which is concerned primarily with, uh, primarily with liability for defective products. Other areas discussed include liability in tort for negligence, product safety and the criminal law. Obviously, conflict of laws comes into it as well, and much more. And I will say, just on the question of, of negligence, that really that is the, the basis of where this particular uh, book came from, bearing in mind Donoghue and Stevenson being the, the case which opened the new modern law of negligence era. And what I'm saying since then is that a lot of things have changed and we've become international. And of course, when I say conflict of laws, the latter especially offers an international dimension to this text, which we welcome, because it covers not only the subject as it's developed in English law, but also provides numerous references to the equivalent laws in other jurisdictions. They include the United States of America, Canada, New Zealand, France and Germany. This, of course, will be directly relevant to those who practice in an increasingly globalised market in which we all seek to prosper. And I'm sure that notwithstanding COVID-19, things will pick up fairly quickly once we get over the hurdle of this pandemic. Within its more than a thousand pages, then, the text covers every conceivable aspect of what is a wide-ranging and often complex subject where the continuing focus is on duty of care. And I will say a word of warning. Uh, here, and that is that product liability is not as simple as you think. 
It may look, oh, well, that, that looks relatively straightforward. Alas, it's much more complex than that. So be careful and make sure you pay attention to detail. Certainly, we think that lawyers will appreciate its accessibility and clarity, as will many a litigant in person today. Indeed, this is a, um, a particularly useful reference for professionals who must construct quite intricate um, skeleton arguments for court hearings on product liability litigation. I haven't done very many myself, but I've certainly found that uh, it does help the judges if you actually have a very clear um, skeleton when you're looking at a product liability um, issue and, a, and, and basically a defence. Let me conclude by saying that we think lawyers and the judiciary too, as well as researchers, should be jolly grateful to Oxford University Press for keeping us all up to date with developments in what is an important, fast changing at the moment and vital area of the law. And the date of publication of the hardback third edition is given as at the 9th of May 2020 and I'm actually recording it, uh, this in um, the sort of later part of May 2020. Let's just have a look at the book again. There it is, as I say, it's a heavy book, hardback, and there's the side, just opening in the middle. This is Consumer Expert Expectations versus Risk Utility, that's the title of it. Again, this is the problem, you see, it's what do you expect as a consumer, what should you expect, and the Consumer Protection Act gives you some statutory protection against people who've done things they shouldn't have done or failed to do things. There's the paragraph numbering, which you can see at the sides, and there's the footnoting. And you can see there's a lot of case law mentioned throughout. Um, there's a huge amount of work that's gone into this by um, Fairgreave and uh, Goldberg. And I'm very grateful to both of them for taking on this task, because clearly um, this is an important book, because it affects a large number of people who are consumers. And with that, do have a look at our reviews, uh, reviews as they appear on the web and in the journals. And in the meantime, a very big thank you to OUP and everybody concerned with the production and the writing of this work. Thank you. Bye-bye.